spoiler alert, in this video I am not um, removing the back cover off the display and inserting a card directly onto the PCB on the display, uh, as you may need to do. I have included a link in the description field that will take you to the Creality version of the How to Flash video. And in there they will show you how they take this thing apart when they're flashing and then they, they'll show you how to put it back. There are two screws uh, in the bottom here, one's out of frame, uh, that you would normally remove. You could lift the display bracket right off the printer at that point. It is tethered on a connector that you're trying hard not to break. Right, this connector here, like that. There are four uh, bolts that you need to remove to take this cover off. And down here at the bottom, where you see a cable going into the back of mine, right at the bottom, there'll be a socket that the micro SD card is going to slot into when you're flashing this machine. What I did instead was slot in an adapter one time, a little bit of extra cable that just coils out of the way. There's a full SD connector on this end. You have a choice when you're buying adapters. You can have it either way, micro or full. I liked full because I had full on the other side. I could use this on the motherboard. I can use the same card to flash both. It just goes in there, click. This is just double-sided tape holding it to the bottom. And this case is available on Thingiverse. I've also put a link to that in the description field. So when I'm flashing here, you're just going to see me push a card in here. Uh, but what you'll need to do, if you don't have this conversion in place already, is take this cover off and slide your micro SD card very carefully into the slot. And remember to take it out again before you close everything up because you're finished. And we're back. So now we can take the card we prepared in step two and loaded with files in step three and push it into our display to flash it as step five. When you're finished, you'll see this screen with the four buttons and the yellow text. The text will read, uh, what does it show us there? CR6COM uh, release 6.1 final is ready. There'll be no 6.0 in the title. That's a previous release that you don't want to be using. There'll be no PRE in the title. That's a pre-release version that you don't want to be using. It says 6 1 final, just like it did in the title of the zip file that we downloaded at step 1. What you'll see here is setup in the bottom left corner. When you go to setup, you'll see an info button there. When I ask you on uh, the Discord if uh, you would just tap the info and let me know what it says, that's what I mean. You'll see the print volume dimensions at the top. That clues you in whether it's SE or Max that you flash to your system. You'll see the 6.1 final again, which is what the motherboard software is telling the display it has loaded. And you'll see the address on GitHub where you can come if you need to um, file issue reports or research uh, the latest uh, X2E release or whatever it is you'd like to do. And when we have flashed everything and we think we're good to go, what the recommendation is come here, uh, press the Restore Factory Settings button, and that will make sure that everything in the configuration files is loaded into the electrically erasable programmable read-only memory on the motherboard, just to be certain that there's nothing residual left in from the previous configuration that was on the machine before you flashed this firmware. So let's jump back to the home screen and get on with the flash thing. This is the SDXC card, the 64 gig card that we partitioned to a mere three gigabytes and formatted to 4096 FAT32 and loaded with our files. We can now slot it into the display. I get to click this into my adapter underneath the screen. And if you recall on that card, is both the display firmware and the motherboard firmware because I said it wouldn't make any difference uh, to have them both on the same card at the same time and here we are demonstrating that. So we power off the display and the printer. And when we turn power back on the display turns a blue background. There's a line across the top which was briefly white and now is red that says DGIS 2 version 3.5 is loaded. You see non-zero values accruing down the right-hand side next to each type of file as it counts the number of files with that suffix and loads them in. 
you'll notice that uh, ICL is a bit slower than the rest uh, and has the most files to copy. Now there has been at least one case reported where although the right numbers were here, the display still had not flashed correctly and we're surmising there was something in the, about the card where the uh, boot load and process here managed to count the files but didn't load them correctly. So, but it's a fairly reliable indicator here that if there are non-zero values here, you're doing all right. If they're all zero values, it indicates it's not able to read the cards. They may as well stop and you're going to need a different card or you at least need to prep it again. There are cards that are intermittent. Sometimes things flash this time and not the next time. You're going to need to use a different card and try again. You'll see the line across the top in red that says the DHS2 version 3.5 is loaded. If it happens to be white and not red, don't worry. That happens also on the first flash. But um, that has to say 3.5. If it says 4.0 or 3.4 or anything except 3.5, that's wrong. It's not going to work. The firmware must have 3.5 in order to run on this display. So that's step three, where we showed you how to find the upgrade files and stick them in here. If that's what you've done and it's not working anyway, then I'm sorry, there's maybe something wrong with your card. So you may have noticed for a while now, while I've been talking, that it says um, end with an exclamation mark at the top. That, that's the process is complete now. It's loaded everything it's going to load. And the operating system that's in place is uh, named across the top. So at this point, if it looks like mine, you're good to go. We can now switch off power and remove the card. Because if we leave the card in there and power it back on, it's just going to do this all over again. So power off and card out. We give it a couple of seconds for the capacitors in the power supply to completely drain out. And then we power back up. We got our boot screen, the progress bar, and then we on our home screen. And the yellow message line confirms that we have now uh, loaded uh, release 6.1 final and it's ready. This is when we recommend you go to setup, factory reset, cycle power one more time, and then you'll be ready to start calibrating. So we'll make sure that our Z offset is correct. And then we'll run the automatic bed leveling since uh, flashing will have wiped out the last one we had. If you don't have the stock extruder and you're not compiling your own firmware, then you'll need to come here to set up the e-steps for the extruder that you do have. And you may want to come here and do a pitch tuning to make sure that your thermistor and your heater element are working well uh, with this firmware installed. And that's it. The process is that simple. Five easy steps. Step one, go to the right place. Take down the right version of the firmware. Now you know how to recognize what that is. Step two, get an SD card ready for the uh, full size for the main board if you wish. Or, or a micro SD in a carrier will work fine. A micro SD for the display. If it's an SDXC card, it's too big. 4096 sectors off the bat for a single partition. I've showed you how to partition it and there's now a bonus video up there on the same playlist that'll go through all the motions of partitioning and formatting to your heart's content on the same SD card. As long as the first primary partition is readable by the printer and that's where your files are, you're good to go. Step three, you make sure you find the kernel upgrade files, you put them in the DWIN set folder, you can copy that to the disk that you're going to put into the display. Step four, we flash the motherboard. And step five, we flash the display. And if you wish, you can combine steps four and five. If you have two cards, stick one in each, cycle power once, you're good to go. When everything's loaded up with the same version of 6.1, it says CF 6.1 final, ready on your display. And you're ready to reset and start printing. Now, if you've got this far, and your display is not how it should be, it's black or blank, then check out whether it's blank if there's clearly a backlighting on the display, but no menu, no CF61 ready. It's 
black if there's no backlighting either. On the FAQs on the wiki, there are a series of things you can check for. Black with no power typically means something's gone wrong with the harness. Either the connector's loose or pins come loose inside the connector, or maybe the harness has been pinched um, it gets caught behind the drawer on some models where they've routed the cable that way and it can break a wire. If it's blank, um, typically what's happened um, for those users I've interacted with is they've had the wrong version of the DGIS system running on their display. Uh, Creality flashed it with 3.4. When I looked at it most recently, there is a version 4.0 out there that has been found on at least one display with this condition. 3.5 is what it has to be. So this is where you go back to step 3 and you say, did I really get the kernel files on the correct partition with the correct format in FAT32 or is that where I got lost? If you swear you're doing everything right and I'm not here to doubt you, the only other thing we've known uh, goes wrong is the cards themselves get flaky. Whether it's the card or the, or the display that's reading it, um, there are times when a card works sometimes and not other times. It works here but not there. We've known uh, users who've been able to flash their display off a card and then the motherboard failed to flash off the card. And it can be very frustrating and difficult to troubleshoot that sort of thing because intermittent is intermittent. Sometimes it works, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. So when all else fails and you've followed all the instructions and nothing's working, or sooner if you want to try this, try a different card. Or if you don't have another card, try another carrier for the micro SD on the motherboard and see if that helps. Um, or you're going to have to go get another card. Because in the end, we all succeed at flashing the system. It's not the firmware and it's not the instructions you're following. Then it has to be something uh, unfortunate and intermittent about either the hardware or the cards you're using. And rarely it could be both. When everything's done correctly, this system works a charm. Honest.